Okay, I'm looking at a John Deere 4300 and a lot of times, actually almost all the time on the 4000 series, whether it's the, the 4310, um, 4210, 4410, or just the straight 42, 43, and 4400, the plastic on these is really a common issue that always is cracking, right? And most of the time, um, people will just let it go until the panel either falls off or so cracked that it's about to fall off. But you don't really have to do that because there is a ton of aftermarket companies that make these panels. Since it's a common issue, um, you'll find a lot of aftermarket companies will make the panels. They'll make the hood, the side panels, the two cowl panels, and the underdash panel. And you can get all these panels, I wanna say um, less than $1,000. You could have all new panels, all new hood, even the grill um, for that much. You could, about $1,000, a little bit less, you can get everything brand new. And honestly, on a machine like this, it'll last forever, the machine. So um, if you've got one that's got a bunch of cracked plastic on it, I would recommend you at least replace the panels that are cracked and that way it doesn't get any worse. And today I'm gonna do that. I've already got the old panels off it, the old cowl panels off it in the um, dash panel and the two side panels, there's just these clips, but I was doing other things on this machine, so I wanted to video um, what it would look like. Obviously, before, uh, you could imagine it was uh, cracked side panels and cracked cowls, and the hood was a complete mess on this machine. So I'm gonna show you the after picture, and I also like to do um, new labels on the hood and on the cowls for the machine. So it'll, it'll look brand new. It'll look exactly, pretty much exactly how it would look if you got this from the factory brand new. I have to admit that the aftermarket panels don't fit as perfect as the John Deere panels, but they're about one you know, tenth or one twentieth the cost of a, of a, a panel from John Deere. If you wanna spend the extra money, you know, absolutely, if you go to John Deere and get, the, you get their panels, they're gonna fit just a little bit better, I would say, but, in my mind, the aftermarket ones, for the amount of money you're gonna save, are just fine, believe me, they're, they're just fine, and nobody can tell that there's an aftermarket uh, set of plastic on the machine, right? So when you, when you get these um, aftermarket, they're gonna, they're gonna come basically wrapped up nice and plastic, there's gonna be no scratches on them, they'll come wrapped up in a box by brand new, so it's not like you're ordering um, a bad aftermarket product, all these aftermarket companies make decent plastic products, and you can also get, I would recommend you get the bolt and the, um, there's some nuts that go on the back of the bolts or clip-ons. So you can get the, the bolt kit for the John Deere 4300 aftermarket. And I wanna say that was less than $20. Definitely get that because when you go to take these out and you go to put the new panels on, you want, you want the bolts to be clean. And you if you're missing some, which you always are on these machines because they're 20 years old, so if somebody takes one off and loses it and puts a different bolt in, you don't want to do that on the new panels because it won't be right. So get the kit with the bolts and the, and the nuts with the clips on them. And then when you go to take off the old bolts, you're going to use WD-40. I always WD-40 everything down. And then when you take off the bolts and the nuts, you can, you can save those because if you lose one, you want to be able to replace it. And the John Deere ones, they have hard, they're made from hardened steel and they're 20 years old, so the steel's even better. So save the ones you take off. You can put the new ones on and, and then you'll be much better off. So I'm gonna show you, this is what it looks like kind of before and I'll show you the after and uh, I can offer a few tips on, along the way. Okay, I got the cowls on. <clears throat> it went pretty smooth. I think the biggest thing on this is just take your time. The aftermarket panels fit really good. I mean, surprisingly good. I think uh, the pointers I'm gonna offer you are the things that I took a little time to, to kind of work through, so hopefully it'll save you some time. Um, the first one is when you get the clips, there's gonna be uh, two long clips that are longer than the other ones, and then there'll be um, four or more, right, of the short ones. So there's these two longer ones, and where they go is on the top over here. So they're gonna go underneath just like that on the, in the plastic, right? So you're gonna actually have them more like this, I guess they would call it. So they'll, they'll be like that, and those two long ones will go on the top, and that's what's gonna keep the top of the, the instrument cluster panel fastened to the, to the cowl panels. So that's the first tip I can offer you. If you don't do that, when you go to put the, um, the instrument cluster back on, 
you'll have a hard time. You won't be able to get these on properly, and, and but that's why. So there's two long ones, and that's where they go. The, the other thing to keep in mind that when, if you do get the kit, you wanna you wanna make sure that when you put the new bolts in, the new bolts will be about a half inch longer, almost twice the length as the original ones. So wherever you use the new bolts, I would just make sure that you have the room behind that bolt where you're not gonna run into something. So for, for example, um, if you were to look under here, let me open this and see where these go. The new bolts will go um, kind of in this area, right? So you've got one here, obviously. And if you don't check behind that and make sure that you've got clearance behind it, it's gonna push into what's ever behind it, which may or may not be a big deal, but it'll be a big deal, obviously, if it's the, if it's the reverser um, hardwares, right? And that shaft that goes to, you know, up and down to move uh, the machine forward and reverse. So you don't wanna run into any hardware behind those longer bolts. That's pointer number two. If that's the case, just take one of the original shorter ones in that, in that scenario and use it in place of the longer bolts, right? So that's all I did. The, uh, the third thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend is I don't like to see aftermarket bolts on, on tractors. So they give you bolts to go actually on the front of the instrument cluster and the back of the instrument cluster panel. Um, I didn't use those. I, I like the flush black John Deere look, right? That looks factory. So in my, in my opinion, um, I just don't like seeing a shiny bolt sticking out of the panel, right? You can almost, it almost looks like something is off. So I would recommend my third pointer would be just use the original uh, black um, Phillips head bolts when you do the instrument cluster panel, there's four of those, just try to reuse those. And obviously if, you, if you've lost one, go ahead and use the, the new bolts, not a big deal. Uh, but that's just my opinion. And the other tip I'm gonna give you, this is something that people don't realize, but when you go to put the panels on and when you go to adjust your, your cowl, your hood, your panels and the nose piece itself, the nose piece on these is adjustable and nobody really bothers to do that because it's just a tractor, right? But, but if, you, if your side panels are sticking way forward, meaning that you've got a pretty large gap on the side over here. Let's say you've got a half inch to a three quarter inch gap between your cowl and your side panels, and you can't get that side panel to adjust any further back because you're at the, at the back of the, of the adjustment, then you can uh, adjust the nose of the tractor. There's four bolts and they're, they're really easy to loosen, right? There's one here, there's one here, one here, one here, and then two more on the other side of the nose. When you do that, this whole nose piece, and right here, this notch in particular, will move towards the rear of the tractor, which allows you to slide that side panel further back to close up the gap between the side panel and the cowl area. And, and nobody really realizes that, but if you, if you look at yours, a lot of times, these are adjusted all the way forward and you have a lot of clearance between your side panel and your cowl for that reason. So I had to push this about a half an inch back and I put it in the middle of the slot on this adjuster, um, this adjuster bolt here on both sides. Well, after I did that, the, the notch on the side panel sits comfortably in between the notch on the front nose and it also gives me much tighter clearance on the, on the cowl and the side panel looking normal, right? So that's, that's a normal a clearance. It's about 3 eighths of an inch. The hood lines up directly above it, 3 eighths of an inch from the cowl. So, so everything is probably about the same now. And it, look, it looks normal. There's no giant gaps on the sides. With the gap too large, what you'll see is the, is the bolt, the new bolt behind that and, and whatnot. So I just don't like the look of that. So that's tip number four, the adjustment of the nose of the tractor which is just four 10 millimeter bolts that uh, you're gonna back off a couple uh, turns, half a turn, one turn, just to loosen them up, and you can push that nose back a little bit. If you can't get those 10 millimeter bolts off and you, you're afraid you're gonna snap them, you probably won't, honestly, because all the bolts in the John Deere's are hardened steel and they don't really snap even 10 millimeter that easily. Just take a torch, just take a torch and lightly hit that for you know five, 10 seconds. It'll, it'll expand that, um, the bolt, or the nut behind that bolt, and you can get those off real easy. Once you get them off, WD-40 the, the bolt and the nut, and uh, you'll, be, you'll be fine. 
Um, the, the, other, the other thing I'm also um, gonna recommend on this job is that, is that when you do uh, the right side, the bolt on the right side, if you have the John Deere bolt, which is hardened steel, it's probably a grade eight bolt or a grade five or eight, somewhere in there, use that one because this guy here is gonna thread into the metal on the frame. You don't wanna use the aftermarket bolt because that's gonna be a much cheaper, milder steel and it's gonna rust. You don't wanna be able to, if you wanna get this out, you don't wanna break that bolt off someday in the frame, then you have to drill it out, it's a big project. So if you're gonna use the new bolt kit, just use the John Deere one on this one because it's going into the frame, right? You don't wanna be uh, having to drill that out if it breaks off in the future, trying to get this off again. But that, I would say that, that is the four tips. The fifth one isn't so much a tip. I would say it's just the way I, I kind of do these. Uh, if, you have, if you have a large socket set, which most people do, and you want it, you need to get this ring off of the, of the key switch, which is the, the panel for the key switch area. You're gonna use just a large socket on that, right? And you're gonna do that when that's in your hand. Uh, it, it comes right off. If that doesn't, if it doesn't come off easily, you can, you can hit it with an impact really lightly and that'll, it'll spin that right off. So that's how I get those off. That's another tip I can offer. Um, I would say total time on this, on this project is about two hours, two, two to three hours, depending on your skill set and how much, uh, how much you have to take off. The panels I took off were pretty much broken, so I just you know, used, used some tools to quickly pull them off and I didn't really care about saving them. So for me, it was a little bit easier, a little quicker probably. But give yourself, let's say, four hours, half a day to do this. I still have to put the stickers, um, the decals on there, on the hood and the cowl itself. So I'm going to do that now. And I will show you um, what this looks like all cleaned up with decals on it. It'll, it'll look pretty much brand new. You know, the hood closed. It'll look brand new. When you, when you go to wipe these down, uh, I'm kind of a picky person, but you can use a microfiber towel on this on the plastic. You don't want to use a regular towel on the plastic because you're going to scratch it. But the microfiber towels are great. Um, you can use that on plastic. You're going to want to detail it. I'm going to do that before I show you the next part of the video, but you want to detail it uh, with, some, with some plastic detail. And it'll, it'll look brand new. It'll all match. And it'll make it just a huge difference on the appearance of the machine. And also, um, when, you, when you're operating it, it'll just it'll just operate much easier because everything's kind of in place, nothing's falling off, right? So I'm gonna sh I'll show you that next. Okay, I've got uh, the decals all on. These are all the factory decals that would come with the machine. And as you can see, it comes out really nice. If you take your time with the decals, you can get these absolutely perfect. Um, I tend to get them just right because I'm really picky, but uh, believe it or not, they're easy to get straight because the decal itself is, is really not um, going to bend when you put it on. It's just going to go on very straight. So once you start it straight, it just goes on real straight. And I can offer a tip uh, when you're putting on the back part of the decal. So this, this area here. So if, this is a two-piece decal usually. And you can buy these two different ways. You can buy them one piece and it'll go from the back all the way to the front as one piece, the sticker, the John Deere uh, 40, 4300 sticker will go all the way, or they sell them sometimes in two pieces. This one came as two pieces. This was the bigger piece and the smaller piece. So to get these to line up just perfectly, I can offer a tip. I use um, some tape on here, some painter's tape, and I'll take a line, I'll put the big one on first and get that straight with the lines on the plastic. So you use the, use the hood, the bottom line of the hood, as your straight line of reference to put the big one on first. And then once you do that, you know the big one's exactly straight with the hood and you put on the, the one closer to the, to the operator second. And when you take that, that tape, you're gonna run the tape from uh, this line here on the side panel all the way across. And there's the sync reverser sticker is not on yet. Run it all the way across and that way um, the painter's tape will carry that straight line right across so you can get this one just perfectly straight. You don't have to go that crazy with it, but if you want to get it just perfect, um, and I'm kind of just like that, you can do it that way and it would be perfect. And then put your sync reverser sticker on second. And I centered this one in between the, in the sticker. So I think from the factory, this sticker actually is supposed to be back here more. It just looked off to me because it wasn't centered. So I've got that centered in that, that second piece sticker and that looks, I think, a lot better. 
So that's, that's pretty much how you would see this, um, in my mind, from the factory. And if you go around it, you can see, you know, it looks, it looks pretty much how it would come from the factory. And if you go on this side, you'll also see that it looks identical. Um, same setup, you got the sink reverser in the center of that second piece. And everything is just absolutely perfect. Everything comes in nice and tight. There's not a lot of gappage between the panels. The panels and the hood uh, line up, and then there's about a 3 8 inch gap between the cowl and the hood and the panels. So that is it. That is the entire job start to finish. Um, one other tip I would recommend is that when you go to buy the panels, if you buy from a different supplier, the coloration may be just a little off and nobody's going to notice that but if you're really picky and you want it to be exactly all the same color especially in the bright sunshine buy all your panels from the same aftermarket supplier and they'll be the same color um, these ones here matched really really well the coloration might be a shade greener on the cowls compared to the hood and i did buy those from a different supplier uh, just because um, i bought the hood at a different time and i bought the cowls um, afterwards but that's my other tip is buy them all at the same time and they'll match really nicely and you will have uh, just a real nice fit. I would say total time on this is probably now going over the four hour mark, especially with the decals. You want to get those on straight. And uh, like I said, total cost would be less than a thousand for everything. I did not do everything on this job. I did the cowls. I did the dash panel and I did the hood, right? So, so for me, four hours is really what it took but the side panels if you do those there's not much to them they just kind of go into place there's not a lot of work and there's two little clips that hold them on and same with the grill the grill just goes into place you plug in the lights so if you're going to do everything give yourself five six hours just the cowls in the in the panel next to the dash and the hood about four hours and that start to finish and uh i think total price for that what i did was probably in the uh, two to three hundred dollar range, maybe a little more with the decals. You can get all these decals. The sink reverser one, you're going to get that from the John Deere site on the parts list, but you can get the John Deere hood one aftermarket a lot less from an aftermarket supplier. All right, so if you have any questions, uh, just reach out on my channel and hopefully this is helpful.